Brothers and sisters in Christ, we are now in the Cathedral of the Good Shepherd, Singapore, and so let us begin. Oh, the world of my 
prayers for forgiveness and healing before the Blessed Sacrament. Dear brothers and sisters, as we are before the Lord, who is present to us in the Blessed Sacrament, truly and physically, after each prayer, let us allow the words to sink into our hearts. Heavenly Father, I come before you with an open heart to receive your graces, to forgive those who have hurt me deeply. May you heal me and give me the strength to be more like you at all times. Forgive me for the times when I have taken your love and mercy for granted. Heavenly Father, you know my needs and you feel my pain, trials and helplessness. Be my strength and my hope, so that I can forgive as you forgive, and find the peace of seeing and loving you in every person daily. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, let us begin with our guided contemplation of the Gospel. To familiarize with the Gospel text of our contemplation, I will now read the Gospel of St. John, chapter 16, verses 20 to 23, in which Jesus proclaims, Your heart will be full of joy that no one will take from you. Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you most solemnly, you will not be weeping and wailing while the world will rejoice. You will be sorrowful, but your sorrow will turn 
into joy. A woman in childbirth suffers because her time has come. But when she has given birth to the child, she forgets the suffering in her joy that a man has been born into the world. So it is with you. You are sad now, but I shall see you again and your hearts will be full of joy and that joy no one shall take from you. When that day comes, you will not seek, not ask me any question. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. My brothers and sisters in Christ, I will now highlight a few aspects of the Gospel that we just heard proclaimed to help us have a better understanding and appreciation of God's Word and also to prepare our hearts for our guided contemplation prayer. In today's Gospel, Jesus explains to his disciples very clearly that even if his physical departure from them is painful and confusing, and as he will suffer cruelly and be crucified, their sorrow will turn into great joy that will even be greater than the sorrow that they will go through. This will be when he returns to his life in his resurrection. Jesus explains this very clearly with the image of a mother who at the time of the birth of the child goes through immense pain and suffering. But when the child is born, all the pain is forgotten as the great joy of the newborn child that has come into the world is immensely greater and beyond the price of the pain of the childbirth. My sisters and brothers in Christ, you and I and every person have our own great desires and dreams of living a meaningful, fulfilling and happy life. Each of us have different desires and goals in our lives that we think will bring happiness and fulfilment. However, when we reflect on the many challenges that we face, true and lasting happiness and fulfilment can only be experienced if they also bring happiness to others. A person cannot say that his great desires and dreams is to earn $10 million within two years of his career or business if in achieving his goal, he had exploited others like migrant workers or cheated in the pricing, evaded tax, or sold products that harms the health of others like drugs and the like. Happiness and fulfilment in our lives can only be experienced and be long-lasting if what we desire are in harmony with and not in conflict with the gospel values that Jesus proclaimed. That our great desires and dreams, when we achieve them, bring people closer to God. For example, the business promoted greater protection and care for the environment, or provided the poor and the needy with good and just wages, and our services were truly built on relationship and values that were Christ-like, like compassion, care, love, unity, inclusiveness, and eventually one that promotes the greater glory of God. The Gospel also reminds us too that if the goal of our desires and dreams are Christ-centred, then the challenges and the crosses that we are to bear are worthwhile. When Jesus foresaw and knew that he would have to suffer much and embrace the cross of his crucifixion, Jesus was able to see beyond the cross of the resurrection and the consequences of winning the gift of salvation of humanity that made all the suffering he had to endure not only to be worthwhile, but his sacrificial love reveals to us how we too are called to love as selflessly and sacrificially as Jesus has shown us. And so, 
In today's Gospel, Jesus is inviting you and I to follow Him more closely and have the courage, trust and strength to persevere in the challenges of our faith as eventually Jesus' resurrection will reveal a victory over death and sin and will offer us the gift of salvation which is worth the price of the temporary pain and suffering that we are called to bear. My brothers and sisters in Christ, before we enter into the guided contemplation proper, may I ask you to please switch off your mobile phones and set up a conducive ambience for your prayer. Please also note that as I guide you along during the contemplation, follow me only if you find what I say to be helpful to your prayer. But if the Holy Spirit is to guide you in some personal way that is different from mine, then simply ignore what I'm saying. Please note too that there will be moments of silence which are deliberate. These moments are very important parts of the contemplation. They are to give you the sacred space to listen to and feel the promptings of the Holy Spirit, however this may be. And if you wish to have more details of the structure of this guided gospel contemplation and also to listen to the introduction of this series, please click on the link at the bottom. And so, my sisters and brothers in Christ, having prepared ourselves to familiarize with the gospel text that we are to contemplate on, we can now begin our contemplation. Let us begin by composing ourselves. Please switch off your mobile phones, close your eyes, sit upright, Focus your attention on your nostrils. Become aware of your breathing. The air that is entering your nostrils and giving you life. Every breath you take is God's precious gift of life to you. Be grateful to God for the gift of life. For as soon as we stop breathing, we will die. God is present within your heart and is loving you personally and intimately. Thank the Lord. prayer to pray for the graces we need for our contemplation. Heavenly Father, we pray that during this contemplation, you would give us the grace of your light, wisdom and inspiration to see beyond the challenges of our faith in order to live more fully in your love and ways.
imagine yourself at a scene where you are with Jesus and his disciples, casually walking in the countryside. You smell the countryside air and you feel the roughness and dusty path that you walk on. You sense that the usual joyous mood that you and the disciples usually have is somewhat gloomy. As you do know, do not know what is going to happen when Jesus is going to suffer and be crucified. This reality of Jesus' suffering is also causing you confusion in faith. That Jesus has been proclaiming and witnessing over the past three years. As you love Jesus deeply, you also feel the pain to know that he is going to suffer so cruelly. You look into your own hearts 
and see your own worries, pain and trials of your life. And you ask yourself, how am I going to continue to be strong in the crosses I carry with Jesus being arrested, persecuted and crucified? You recall the times when your trials and tribulations in your life were unbearable. When you felt as though you were bearing these heavy crosses all on your own without Jesus. Jesus, sensing your thoughts and feelings, put his arms over your shoulder as you walk along. You feel his warm and brotherly love and care for you. You were not surprised that Jesus could know the burdens that are weighing on you and the crosses of doubt that you are harboring in your heart. Jesus then assures you and the disciples, do not worry 
that I will be away from you when they persecute and crucify me. Your sorrows will turn to great joy as a mother, after giving birth to her child, forgets her suffering. You sense the consolation of Jesus' assurances and you believe that what Jesus has said is true. Recall the moments in your life when your sorrows too turned to great joy and you knew that the blessings were from Jesus' mercy and love for you and your loved ones. Become conscious that you are in your room where you are praying. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may open your eyes now. My brothers and sisters in Christ, St. Ignatius of Loyola reminds us that soon after our contemplative prayer, we are to do a review of our prayer experiences. This review only needs to take some five minutes or so. The purpose of this review of prayer is to recall and relish what happened during the prayer. Get in touch with your inner feelings during the contemplation and then describe your experiences. As such, click the pause button now. Close your eyes and spend the next few minutes making a review of your contemplation prayer. My brothers and sisters in Christ, just before we end, may I bring your attention again to those of you who are not yet familiar with this guided contemplation form of prayer and would like to have a greater clarity of the meaning and steps of how to pray this form of prayer. If so, then please click the link below this video for the details. I strongly believe that if you keep trying to pray this guided contemplation prayer, you will soon be familiar with it and will reap the fruits of the Spirit that will lead you to encounter Jesus in a way, in a very personal way, through the contemplation. Take one patient step at a time, and God will soon provide you with beautiful and profound experience of Him in ways that you have never experienced before. We shall now move on to the next part of our session, which is the benediction.
you have given them bread from heaven. Let us pray. O God, in this wonderful sacrament, left us a memorial of your passion. We ask you to enable us so to worship the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may constantly feel in our lives the effects of your redemption. You who lives and reigns forever and ever. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, welcome to our episode 18. By the way, before I begin, I guess some of you may be wondering why we have changed the term of this discernment series from parts to episodes. Well, our team thinks that the word episode instead of parts is clearer because while each presentation of a team is a continuation of the earlier presentation, and builds on and develops on them, nevertheless, each presentation can also stand on its own. This means that when someone watches, say, for example, episode 13, he or she does not have to watch all the first 12 episodes before he can follow and understand episode 13. However, having said that, we would highly encourage everyone to watch the earlier episodes if one wishes to benefit more from this series of helping us live a more discerning life. Let us first recall that in our earlier episode, we highlighted the very essential point for us to live a more discerning life. You and I have to be very consciously aware of our inner feelings, whether they are our physical, emotional, or spiritual inner feelings. This is because for St. Ignatius of Loyola, inner feelings are the basis for helping us discern whether our experiences are from God or not from God. We will get into the specifics and technical details of this in our later episodes. And so, let us get used to being more conscious of these inner feelings of ours, whether they are physical, emotional, or spiritual. We emphasize that it is very important for us to name 
and try to sense what these inner feelings are and then present them and surrender them to our Lord and ask the Holy Spirit to enlighten us on what is happening to us in our present life. In order to live a more discerning life, we are then to open our minds and our hearts to let God's Spirit unveil to us what is happening to us in our lives and how He is present with us in our experiences. In our last episode, we reflected on the theme, How Do We Understand God? and highlighted how we should not take God for granted and never to treat God as though He is on the same level of dignity as us finite human creatures. We highlighted that this is because God is infinite power who can create the whole universe and that He too is infinite wisdom and has total and unconditional love for us. And as such, His ways are not our human ways. We, on the other hand, are mere finite, limited and sinful creatures who often have the tendencies to reject His love. In other words, when we open our minds and hearts to God, we should fully trust and believe in God's infinite love, mercy and fidelity for us. In today's reflection, we could reflect further on how we could continue to show gratitude to God in spite of the pains, trials and tribulations in our lives. This is an important and relevant reflection because it is not unreasonable to assume that many of us are experiencing trials in our lives. And for some of us, such trials are immense pain and suffering. And during such trying times, it is understandable if we should find it very difficult to experience deep gratitude to God in our hearts and where we sense that God does not seem to be with us or caring for our needs. And if God is really caring for our needs, many of us may then ask, why then am I still suffering so much? To illustrate how we can live a more discerning life in such great trials and tribulation in our lives, I would like us to reflect on the testimony of Lisa Duffy and her great torments and traumas of her life. Lisa shares, Divorce changes life on almost every level possible, physically, financially, emotionally, intellectually. It is one of the most difficult aspects of life to deal with because for at least half of the spouses, they didn't want to ask for this change. And they feel it as the worst thing that could have happened to them. She says, if you are in a great deal of pain of finding it difficult to deal with the loneliness and depression that often accompanies divorce, it is expected because of the deep hurt and betrayal that is traumatizing you. She says, in my own experience, my life was suddenly in black and white after my spouse walked out. Food had no pleasing flavor. Jokes were not funny, and the world seemed cold and grey. How could I find something to be grateful for when nothing 
was the way it was supposed to be. How could I even think of being thankful when I was in such great pain? Gratitude seems to be as impossible to achieve for me as it was to consider forgiving those who had hurt me. But God always has a merciful and gentle way of leading us back to Him. As for me, it would be through a documentary on the World War II and the Holocaust that I watched one night on television. I was captivated by the story of a young woman, Jessie, not her real name, who was in a prisoner in the Bergen Belsen concentration camp. One morning, Jessie had been raped and she was starving and found herself in line for the showers to be gassed to death. However, miraculously, Jessie and another young woman found a loose panel in the shower wall just moments before the gas was turned on and they quietly escaped. They ran in the freezing snow for miles until they were found by American troops and were rescued. And here Jessie was years later an old woman with rosy cheeks who had gone on to live a full life and found happiness. In spite of the fact that she had lost her entire family and had suffered so greatly, she was never bitter. And all this was possible because Jessie was able to thank God for all her blessings. Lisa shared further. I was so affected by Jessie's story that I had to ask myself, is there anything stopping me from doing the same thing? Which is to thank God for the blessings in my life. My answer was, there was nothing. So with God's grace, from that day onwards, my perspective of life and suffering changed. More importantly, I was able to go beyond my pain and suffering and see the abundant blessings that God has been giving me and continues to give me. As I reflected on my life, I began to realize that since my divorce from him, I was suddenly free to practice my Catholic faith. Even though I had married a Catholic, my ex-husband never practiced the faith. So I usually went to Mass alone and was given a hard time for practicing my Catholic faith, as he would ridicule me for doing so. Now, I could practice my faith freely. Realizing this brought me much consolation. I also realized that the terrible fighting and arguments that went on had stopped. There was also no more yelling, no more angry insults, and my home was once again peaceful. My attitude of gratefulness began to grow, and after a while, I was able to recognize the many ways I had been blessed by God since my divorce. In reflecting further, on her divorce, Lisa advises, I quote, remember that your divorce does not define you. God made you a beautiful creature. You have strength, you have talents, a uniqueness that when offered with generosity brings meaning, consolation and happiness to others. My brothers and sisters in Christ, it is true and you should believe that you are a special and unique creation of God and loved by Him personally. And as such, 
no one else is given the gifts that you are specially given by God. And so as Lisa advises, she says, so you should sit down and make a list of your strengths and talents that God has given you, regardless of how negative you may think about yourself and what the secular world expects of you. All these strengths and talents and many other gifts that God has given you are God's precious and special blessings on you. This is all the more important in situation of divorce, as Lisa explains. I quote, when a marriage ends, often one or both spouses walk away with a loss of self-confidence and a sense of inadequacy, unquote. As such, my brothers and sisters, such positive and Christ-like views and attitudes are needed so that we can affirm the good and the God-given blessings that you and I have within us and not allow the pain and the hurts of our lives to fester and destroy God's gifts and blessings that are within us. In other words, as we reflect on Lisa's personal suffering, her suffering that represents the different sufferings in our lives and in the lives of many who have faith in Jesus, let us ask ourselves, in our personal suffering, can we live in the faith and hope that God will come to our rescue and that He will never abandon us because of His merciful love for us. The virtue of gratitude enables us to move forward in our lives. And as Lisa shares, that I had survived the trauma of my divorce, I am better for it. And Lisa adds, Gratitude heals your heart and provides a multitude of reasons to wake up in the morning and get out of bed and have a thankful heart that paves the way to healing and recognizing God's continued plan for your life. My brothers and sisters in Christ, you and I are not perfect. We are all sinners. We are all human beings who often experience pain and trials of life. But as God never fails us, we must not fail Him with an ungrateful heart. It is only when our hearts are grateful to God that we can then be His disciples of hope to others who are suffering in this world. Yes, indeed, there is much pain and suffering in the world, but it is our Christian vocation to make a positive difference in today's world. It is through the concrete witness of our lives, as with Lisa, that Jesus is inviting you and I today to build the church and bring hope to the world. However, if we do not have the wisdom to see that you and I are still loved and blessed by God, and in spite of the many pains and trials in our lives, then the other sad alternative would be to rely on our own limited human strength. If Lisa had survived her traumatic divorce in her marriage, and Jesse who was raped on the verge of being gassed to death, managed to escape and survive, and both of them were able to see how, in spite of all their traumas and immense suffering in their lives, God was nevertheless still caring for them, 
and blessing their lives with gifts and talents, then there is always hope in life, regardless of how painful and challenging our trials and tribulations may be. And as such, being able to recognize such blessings, both Lisa and Jesse were able to open their hearts to receiving God's graces and strength and develop a deep gratitude to God in their lives. And from then on, lived a meaningful and fulfilling life. My brothers and sisters in Christ, in conclusion, let us note that we can be sure that if both Lisa and Jesse were to have relied on their own human finite strength, in all probability, the traumas of their life would have drawn them into a darkness that would have caused them deep depressions, pain, agony, and misery for the rest of their lives. However, their saving graces were that they had the wisdom to trust God fully and totally and were able to hold on to their faith and see that God is still present in their lives in spite of their agonizing pain and sufferings of their lives. And as such, were able to draw strength from their faith in Jesus in their darkness and greatest crisis in their lives. Likewise, you and I are called also to learn to draw strength from God, our Father, who like Jesus, he was going through his great agony in the garden and when his anguish and torments were most intense while he was hanging on the cross and falsely condemned in public as a criminal, he as the Son of God was able to draw strength from his Father's love and persevere in his unfailing faith and held on to the truth that he is not alone until his Father's will for the salvation of all peoples is fulfilled. In short, being inspired by Lisa and Jesse and reaffirming our faith in Jesus, let us then, in living a more discerning life, Ask God for the graces and wisdom to go beyond our pain and trials of our lives and renew our faith and trust in God's love more fully and continue to live God's will with deeper gratitude in our hearts. Thank you for joining us in this session and I look forward to having you in our next session 19. God bless you. Lord Jesus Christ, as you are present before us physically and truly in the Blessed Sacrament, we ask you for the grace, the light and the wisdom to know how your Father's love for us is so merciful, total and unconditional. Give us that wisdom to remain faithful to your Father's will regardless of the challenges we face so that we will truly live the fullness of life that He wills of us. And so we pray that we receive the graces to live your Father's will with greater generosity of heart as we pray. Lord, 
Teach me to be generous. Teach me to serve you as you deserve. To give and not to count the costs. To fight and not to heed the wounds. To toil and not to seek for rest. To labor and not to ask for reward. Save that of knowing I do your most holy will. Amen.